Good evening, it's Rob Goodwin here, Chair of the Montpelier DRB. We'll call this meeting to order. Um, just start this off, uh, Mike is filling in for Meredith tonight, who is out, um, and so he's going to go through a brief overview of our remote meeting, <laughs> hybrid meeting procedures. So that was my mistake there. All right, good evening, I'm Mike Miller. Uh, I'm filling in for Meredith. And let me pull this up real quick. those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the Development Review Board meeting via the Zoom platform through either the video and telephone access options shown here. There we go. If anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me at, at mmiller at montpelier-bt.org. For those attending via Zoom, please make sure that your Zoom name includes both your first and last name so we know who we are speaking with and to assist the recording secretary. Also, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce the background noise. Uh, phone Zoom is star six to mute or unmute. The Zoom chat function should only be used for trouble troubleshooting or logistical questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those using a phone, you can press star nine to do so. Or state your name if you're unmuted and wait for the chair to recognize you. Once the chair has recognized someone to participate, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. In the event that the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. And I'll now hand it back to the chair. Okay. And uh, so we'll start now by introducing the board members. Uh, starting on my right, we have Karen Allen, Vice Chair. Jean Leon, board. Catherine Burgess, board member. Mike Miller, staff. Rob Goodwin, chair. And we have Michael online. Yes, Michael Zorchek, I'm online. Thank you. Perfect. We, uh, do have a quorum this evening and um so i would suggest for as far as the agenda a motion to swap the um one item for the vcfa up to number eight number seven so i make the motion to amend the agenda by putting the call sheet application first second. So moves the motion by sharon second by abby um all those in favor say aye Right. Right. Agenda is approved as amended. And um, so at this point, I am going to just make a few comments. The comments I have is that uh, Sharon will be uh, taking up the completion of the College Street application. Um, and I will return and we will take up the uh, Maple Street Lane. Um, since the minutes have to deal with uh, the College Street application, you guys can take care of those. Uh, so also, the minutes as well. Yeah, I probably okay. shouldn't approve the minutes at the meeting I wasn't here. <laughs> okay. So uh, I will uh, step out. I have not been participating in the College Street uh, application, and uh, I'll be back when you guys are ready. Um, I guess uh, first, let's see. Um, have everybody reviewed the minutes of the uh, February 6th meeting? There. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so the other thing that we need to do um, is look at the college street application. Where's that? It's loud. There's a um, there's a meeting next door. Okay. Okay, so like really try to get close. Meeting over there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so uh, with the uh, 36 College Street uh, Vermont College of Fine Arts application, um, they have withdrawn their application. And um, so we can open the hearing and then I would enter entertain a motion uh, for us to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to open the hearing. We already did that. Okay, I'll make it. <laughs> okay, that's already okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Close the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I think uh, we can go get Rob. I think we're um. That's what that's what we needed to get done. Thank you, Katie. Um, Katie, the applicant, uh, just let me know that the meeting has changed, been changed from March 2nd to March 9th, and it's whatever's in the notes regarding their public process. Okay. So if people so, are interested in following up on that, they can do that on uh, on the website. But for anyone in the public who is uh, hasn't been able to follow exactly everything that was going on, so the application has been withdrawn, so there is no application, which is why there is no hearing tonight. So, okay. Um, you ready for the uh, Maple Lane application? We are. Who is uh, representing um, Mr. Robolini? I am. Can you hear me? Oh, just barely. Barely. Let's see if I can turn it up a little bit. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just wait for Mike to come back. Get some background noise going on here. Yes, I could hear it. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe we can look that's better whatever you ask them to do yeah all right wonderful all right steve can you hear us now is that better yes, I can. All right, I think that's better in here too. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start by uh, swearing in uh, those folks that are going to testify uh, tonight. Um, who um, on the um, Zoom platform, other than Steve, is going to be uh, speaking tonight on this application? Anybody? Going once, going twice. All righty, Steve, you're, you're the one. Um, so if you want to um, raise your right hand and uh, to be sworn as a witness, and uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Thank you, Steve. Now, um, Mike, do you want to give a brief little summary of the application before we turn it over to Steve for his uh, his portion here? All right, so uh, really quick, as, as you know, I have not been a part of the application process. Uh, Meredith has been the one guiding through the uh, application, but uh, this applicant seeks a final subdivision review and approval for a proposal to subdivide the building known as 57 Maple Lane and more than 5,000 square feet of land from the parcel that is currently containing 42, 56, and 57 Maple Lane, which will result in a, an 18,962 square foot parcel that incorporates a private right of way varying in width from 32 feet to 55 feet to extend Maple Lane from the southeast 
uh, a storage building in 42 Maple Lane, uh, which is a six unit residential building. And that will be all called parcel one and a 5,303 83 square foot parcel with frontage on Maple Lane extension and including the existing 57 Maple Lane building and how and that houses Joe's kitchen, which is going to be called parcel two. Okay. And Meredith in her staff report outlined uh, some areas such as off street loading uh, had a couple of requests for changes to the flat, including uh, parcel naming. There was a question about hydrants and a question about exterior lighting. Other than that, yeah. seemed like a pretty straightforward application. Thank you, Mike. Um, all right, Steve, you you gave a presentation at Sketch Plan, but uh, since you've done a bunch of work since then, would you care to update us on the project and uh, sure. that uh, may be important to us? Okay. Well, when I came to the Sketch Plan and there was some discussion on, um, you, you know, an agreement to um, the lighting and the repairs of any lighting and to widen it, uh, including the parking area to the right of ways and, um, and that type of stuff. And so we went back to uh, the drawing board and uh, incorporated that stuff into the uh, plan and uh, also into the proposed deed. I'd sent a copy of the proposed deed because they wanted to see how that uh, shared agreement was going to be written. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I thought, you know, when I last spoke with Meredith that with those changes, we were all set. And I heard you say, well, she had some concerns about the lighting, but that was on after the first meeting. Um, so the comment on the lighting, um, was just, since she's not here, just make sure we're not missing some information, um, that you submitted. Um, what was the last piece of information you submitted on the, on the lighting? Was that with your application or was it after the submittal? Um, I, th I think it was since the sketch plan, but um you know a month or so ago once we thought we had everything together she wanted and we sent it in and i i thought at that point she had everything we needed for this meeting okay because none, none of the lights are changing they've they're all been existing lightings So I think the comment was just a confirmation that the existing lights have some shielding. Um, board members read into it also the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like there's one light pole on lot two. Um, that's emitting 5,000 lumens. Two of the same um, exist on lot one. Right. And and those were put in in 2017 mm -hmm. when the six unit apartment um, was built. So those were part of that application. It does say that they're all permitted that the lights yeah. on the site are right. existing right. and previous permitted previously. Right. Okay. So she's not she's not suggesting that that's a requirement. Is that how you're reading In that? The staff report. I um, didn't think so. All right. Well, we'll start at the start at the top of the staff report and uh, go in order here. We skipped around a little bit. Um, so we have um, a little bit of a limited review here. Um, you know, we're not going through a detailed site plan 
um, this is a subdivision. Um, I think the, the idea is that the, you know, additional uh, development uh, will have, you know, site plan work um, and uh, you know, no need to dig into um, existing development um, for, you know, this subdivision as it's not really changing anything that's on the ground. Um, I think that the, um, the one comment um, here was on the parking and loading areas. Um, and the suggestion was that maybe smaller trucks could, um, you know, come in, but maybe not larger trucks for the regulations. Uh, Steve, did you read that issue in the report? I, I remember seeing something about that. I mean, in the five years or seven years, I guess, that the business has been there, they don't really have big trucks come in there. Yeah. Um, so that was... I think that the, uh, the information that was needed to to confirm that portion of the um, uh, of the, of the concern, um, so it's consistent with the existing uses, we don't see any change um, at this time, and um, there's enough space for trucks to unload without blocking the right of way, uh, the traveled way. Correct. So you said um, that we that you added uh, or you were going to confirm the ex closest existing fire hydrants. Are those on the plane and I'm just missing them? I don't believe there's a fire hydrant on the property anywhere. I don't know where the nearest one would be. Yes. Yeah, so, so we just, I think it's a, yeah, it's a provision of our zoning that you just have to show where the closest fire hydrant is. Um, which shouldn't be too much of a deal. We can um, add that as a condition that when you submit your final plot, you show that. Um, okay. You just have to identify where it is. It doesn't have to be in a particular relation to you. Right. You to right. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think up on uh, Berry Street, we're in front of the uh, 36 unit apartment house. They probably had put one in there at some point. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely you know, fire hydrants around. We'll just um, we'll add that as a as a condition in our decision there, just so that it um, gets addressed. Dot the T's and dot the I's, cross the T's. Okay. Um, shouldn't be an issue. Um, and and uh, by the way, both those buildings are sprinkled too. Not yeah. that that matters, but this is a perfect. <laughs> um so i guess we're dealt with the fire hydrant dealt with the loading um we're down to the you know it's the lighting here um you know i think that put this board members i think are in agreement that the existing the subdivision doesn't really trigger anything to change with the existing lighting is that correct that's correct, correct. Okay. Um, the only thing I would notice is in her draft conditions, what she asked for was an updated site plan with correct Maple Lane addresses and outdoor lighting fixtures, details, lumens, emissions, demonstrating compliance with total lumen output of 3204. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I think it's all existing, so I'm not sure. I mean, if it shows compliance, that's great. But right. Considering if it exists, it'd be pre-existing, non-conforming. Not sure, in my uh, view, if it would be grounds for denying an application if it was over the lumens limit. It would just be a demonstration that they're non-conforming non because they were approved under the old zoning, which changed in 2018. So. Right. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that what the board's what the board's saying is that pre-existing non-conforming, I, I believe, is you know is is okay. Um, I just don't know if that's an option that's uh, been provided to us. We run into any issues that you see, Mike? <laughs> uh, I was just I wanted to just point that out because yeah. she had a long running, obviously a lot of highlights of stuff she was concerned about in the 
uh, exterior lighting. And then, you know, when it comes to the end, that's what she was looking for. That was, I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what direction she was thinking in her head for resolving it was, yeah. was that if you don't believe it's necessary, that doesn't have to be a condition. Um, a spec sheet or photographs can be submitted. Yeah. Well, I guess I should, I should the, submitting the information, the thing that's going on in my head is that if it's not, uh, you know, that inf information yields that it is uh, different than what we expect. Um, what happens? What happens then? We have to sort of anticipate uh, the results of what we're asking for. Or do we condition it that it's taken up in a site plan review? And so, Steve, did um, did Meredith speak with you about about the light fixtures and the uh, shielding on the lighting? No. Uh, the only communication I think we believe we had was by email. Okay. Now, I mean, at some point during this process, we talked about lighting, and I we had to. I think we had to give them a list of how many lights and what the output was for each one. Okay. Okay. On those two two buildings. And also to confirm that they're fully shielded. Yeah. So I'm looking at page 17 of the staff report. Yeah. So in addition to submitting spec sheets or photographs of the existing light fixtures, to confirm they're fully shielded. Yep. Meaning that the light, the all light is projected below the horizontal. Okay. And to confirm the lumen output of fixtures. To me, it seems like you may have submitted some information, uh, but um, you just, you know, that it maybe wasn't 100%, you know, complete and that. You just pull together what you've submitted that um, Meredith's thinking is that uh, you would be, uh, uh, you know, be, be all set. Um, but um, we don't have any lighting information I see in our application. Anyone else? I didn't see anything no. submitted. No. no. <clears throat> um. Okay. Well, then in that case, it, I feel like it makes sense to condition it. Uh, recommended yeah conditions to add the hot fire hydrant confirmation I'm sorry what was that Jean? we can add the, the confirming the fire hydrant location oh okay yeah yeah um so I was just taking a scan to the application to see if I missed any lighting information or correspondence that was submitted. I don't see anything. Um, so if we look at the plat, I had just one question. I think it should be all right there, Steve. Um, but I just think it'd be helpful for you to go through just talk about the access in these like in these right of ways through the through the parcel. Okay. Uh, and um are all these are the, all these existing or uh is you know could you just run through what's existing and what's proposed and just give us an idea of the right. Well the, the existing whatever's there for existing right of way is there and still will be there. Then over parcel uh one we're given Parcel two of the right of way to go over parcel one. And also parcel one, I believe, is keeping a right of way to go over parcel two. And so there's a right of way through the entire parcel to um um to, to access the eight Putnam Street property. No, uh um no. 
that's the, the right of way is to access the 57 Maple Lane property. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It's 20 feet. So that ends, that, that ends at the, um, at the property, at the property line. And the intention is not to have traffic for eight Putnam street, um, you know, going through, um, this parcel, which. I think it's probably pretty clear, but right now the thing I would add to that is on a under a separate rental agreement that I have with Joe, he does rent some space in the Eight Putman Street building, yeah. But that's entirely separate of of mm -hmm. this, um, so that currently he may drive from Fifty Seven Maple Lane back his truck up to Putman Street. But he's doing that through the rental agreement rather, and he still will, rather than an ownership agreement. Yep. And most of Putman Street, other than that one door, is all on the other side of the building, off the Putman Street side. You know, there's on the other side of the building, there's. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, four overhead doors and a, uh, two man doors and uh, a sliding door, so. Okay. Um, board members have any other uh, comments here? Anything we're, we're missing? Memorize, it looks like we've got Two, two conditions. One is the location of the fire hydrant. The other uh, relating to um, lighting. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd entertain a motion unless there's any more information we need from uh, an applicant. Staff recommendations. We have updated site plan with uh, all the correct addresses. Right. It was uh, a mention of the issue, potential issue with tractor trailers. Did Was there a concern or an interest in restricting tractor trailer deliveries? Well, we got information that uh, wasn't That's typical, but um, yeah. Would that be a amenable condition there, uh, Steve? Um, I, I would think so. I mean, like I say, I've never seen a tractor trailer down in there unless um, unless it came down for the uh, other building that um, the thirty six unit building or something. Um, you know, we've never seen one down in there. And you know the produce that uh, gets delivered for Joe's business is just delivered on a standard. Uh, produce truck, like you see at a lot of restaurants. I would just, I would hate to prohibit a tractor trailer altogether if there's a, you know, construction or something like that. I think that we've confirmed that the general use of the property is not going to create a long term issue with deliveries and that we have that on the record. So I don't see a need to go any further, further than that. Okay. So are we ready for a motion to approve and with condition? Is there no, I, discussion? I see that the you know major issues have been addressed uh, since the sketch plan and uh, kind of subdivision. Well, motion to approve the three parcel subdivision off 42 and 57 Maple Lane, including creation of a private street right of way as presented in application number Z-2023-0010 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval. Within 30 days of this decision and prior to permit issuance, applicants shall submit to the zoning administrator an updated site plan with the correct maple lane addresses two outdoor light fixture details and lumen emissions demonstrating Compliance with the total lumen output limits of 3204. The final plot of recording in the city land records as submitted to the zoning administrator for signature and recording shall 
reference the street right of way for Maple Lane and not a driveway. Within, within 180 days of the decision, applicants shall record the final survey plot in the Montpelier Land Records Office per the procedure detailed in 4405 of the zoning regulations, including the location of all applicable survey rods and markers, including confirming a fire hydrant location. I'll second that. Motion by Jean um, with three and four conditions as discussed. A second by Sharon. Um, Sharon, how do you vote? In favor, yes. Jean? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Michael? Yes. Rob votes yes. Uh, it's unanimously approved. Um, so, uh, Steve, you will uh, get a decision uh, in, a, in a few weeks. And, um, Mike, you have anything to add? Nope, I don't think so. Uh, Meredith is probably going to be out the next couple of days, so I wouldn't expect her to be getting back soon, but uh, I know she'll probably be working on the decision while she's at home recovering. So uh, if she has any questions, I'm sure she'll be in touch. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, have our... Uh, Attendance taken for the evening. Do we um do we know what on uh, what's on the agenda for the next meeting? Um, there are a couple applications. Uh, uh let's see, March sixth. Can pull it up. It's uh, I'll pull it up right now. Monday, March 6th, we have um, Isabel Circle on the agenda. Um, so, uh, are you? I will also uh, not be able to participate in that <laughs> application. I have to, uh, I, I'm not sure if I, if I could participate. I, I was a, I was a plan, like the capital areas neighborhood leader for the district. I attended the first meeting, spoke, and I got. Not necessarily directly involved, but just so I don't know if that would conflict any interest. Since I am also uh, recused from the application, uh, Gene, I would say that just send information to Sharon and um, if you have any questions to Sharon and uh, and to Meredith, if you're unsure. Yeah, um, I, guess, yeah. I mean, I guess I always, um, you know, if you represented yourself in any way as a member of the no, BRB, no, 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 and then if you expressed any particular opinion about the project. Mm, not necessarily. Yeah. Well, well, everyone expressed opinion. It was a public. It was a public yeah. hearing, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So, so that is. Um, on Mar is there anything else on the agenda for? That is it at this point in time. I don't know exactly what the deadline is for more applications, but that one's probably a full meeting. <laughs> Um, oh, it's final subdivision. Final so subdivision. they're not doing the PUD anymore. They've okay. just gone to a subdivision instead. Oh, okay. So. And it was a cottage cluster and it is no longer. It correct. was a cottage cluster PUD for part of it and subdivision for the rest. And they were going to be coming in, if I understand it correctly from Meredith, the original application, because it was, it also included the development, you also were looking at site plan pieces right because they're not doing the PUD it's not including the development of the parcels any longer so therefore the only thing you're going to be re reviewing are subdivision okay. Okay. Go on. and then as the projects are developed each individual application would then have to come in maybe here maybe it's just an administrative permit depending on the application hmm. thank you all right. Well, next meeting will be March 6th. Um, any uh, other business or information from the board? If not, motion to adjourn would be accepted. Motion by Abby. Second. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Adjourn.